Hey there, and welcome to a recording of deploying Kubernetes using KubeSpray. So today, what I want to do is deploy Kubernetes on a six node Kubernetes cluster. And for this, I have prepared a admin host, which we're currently logged on to. And I have de uh, deployed six vanilla Ubuntu 18.04 LTS installations. What we'll do is we'll download and configure KubeSpray and use KubeSpray to configure and install all the six nodes in the Kubernetes cluster. First thing we'll do is we'll generate a um, keyless login for SSH sessions. And for that, we need to generate our RSA PKI keys. And once we have those keys generated, we'll copy them to each of the nodes in our cluster. So my admin node is 10.1.1.100 and the nodes themselves are numbered 101 through 106. So I'll just copy to the first host, do the same thing for the second host. And all the way through to the other hosts as well. There we go. With that, I'm able to log on to each and every machine without using a, uh, a password. So next thing I want to do is I want to be able to execute some commands as root using sudo. Um, and to do that without having to specify a password, I need to edit my uh, sudo file, which is located in that CD directory. So by default, um, admin has every right. And uh, if you're able, if you're a member of the sudo, the sudo group, you also have all the permissions. However, you need to specify a password. Um, what I'll do, I'll specify that my the user that I use for my KubeSpray Cube deployment will not have to enter a password for all the commands that it needs to access. Right, so this is the this is the line. Uh, pure user is the user that, that I'm using. You can use whatever you like. Um, just make sure that this line is after the sudo uh, group. If you, your user is a member of sudo, because otherwise the sudo group will overwrite permissions for your user. There we go. So now um, we have to repeat this on each and every host just to make sure that we can execute all the commands on all the hosts. So I'll start with 101 and continue through with all the others. As you can see, I have now I have enabled passwordless login. So I didn't have to enter a password to get into the host. But I still need to enter a password to sudo. So just modifying those entries. Okay, I'll do this for every every host, and then we can continue with the next steps. All right, so now that I have enabled passwordless login to all the nodes, and I've enabled the pure user user to use sudo without entering a password, I can now proceed with the KubeSpray installation. So the first thing I need to do is install uh, the Python 3 version of pip, which is a package installer built around Python. And the second thing I'll need to do is make sure that uh, the Python 3 version of this pip installer is being used on this system, since by default Ubuntu will use uh, the Python 2.7 version of, of PIP. 
But first I'll need to download and install some packages. And I'll probably fast forward this so we don't have to wait for this. Right, so next thing I'll do is I'll use pip3 to install an upgrade of pip without 3. And once I do that, it will upgrade pip into 19.1 based on Python 3.6. Okay, so now that I have pip installed, I can go ahead and I can actually download kubespray. Just cloning the repository is fine. So going into the kubespray directory, the first thing I'll do is I need to install uh, a couple of uh, requirement, required packages that are needed to use the kubespray installation and they've conveniently packaged those requirements into the requirements.txt file uh, so all you need to do is just execute a pip install command enter the requirements.txt file as input and it will install the packages that you need right so um, with that, we can start building out our configuration and we'll base our configuration on the sample that is included uh, with Kubespray and we'll copy that into a My Cluster folder, which I'll use for my particular deployment. Uh, I also need to declare a variable IPS, which I'll be using later on. Um, and it will contain all the IP addresses for the host that I'm going to use. Now, as I said before, my hosts are numbered 101 through 106. So let me just go ahead and add those to my IPS variable. There we go. And then I can use that variable to build out a, a new config file. in the inventory my cluster hosts.yaml I'll use Python 3 and a script that has been provided by kubespray called inventory pi and I'll use the IPs variable that I've just created as input So we'll use those IP addresses to build the host of the YAML file. Sorry for the typo. Should use an underscore between config and file. There we go. Okay, so once this is done, we can just review our host YAML file and we'll see that all the six hosts have been added. And you can also review the roles that are assigned to each host. For now, I'll leave the defaults. Um, if you're trying to deploy this yourself, I would advise you to go through the group fairs, um, uh, particularly the all YAML uh, file, which defines some generic uh, infrastructure configurations like the external load balancer, proxies, upstream DNS servers, those kind of things. And the second would be the Kubernetes cluster configuration file um, that will contain more detailed information about the Kubernetes cluster, like the version that we will be installing, um, the network overlay driver that we are using for this environment, um, and also the subnets for the pods that we will be assigning. Uh, particularly the 10.23364.0-18 is used to assign a subnet per node. 
So node one will be assigned 10.233.64.0, and then node two will be assigned 10.233.65.0 again, and up to however many hosts that you want to deploy. So again, just review those if you want to, um, but for now I'm good to accept the defaults and just go ahead deploying the, the cluster. So we'll use Ansible playbook for that. Um, we'll enter our inventory my cluster hosts file as input. We specify that we need to become root user as we're not running this as root and we need root permissions. And we're using the cluster.yaml Ansible file, Ansible playbook to do the actual deployment. So once I hit enter, it will actually start deploying, start executing the playbook and it will deploy everything that's required to get Kubernetes deployed on every host. Now this process will take quite some time. Um, if your internet speed is, is fast, you can, it can be done in like 10 minutes. Uh, with me, my lab is a little bit slower, so it will take quite a bit of time. I'll actually fast forward this for the recording because it doesn't really make sense to watch this. Uh, what is good to know is that uh, we just used the cluster.yaml file for the deployment. However, um, Kubespray also provides uh, different playbooks like scale.yaml to add uh, additional nodes, but they also have upgrade scripts to be able to upgrade your Kubernetes version to the latest version. And that's basically the reason you would want to use Cube spray for your deployment of Kubernetes is that it makes it a lot easier to maintain your environment. Uh, deploying and managing a Kubernetes environment by hand is really not the way to go. You really should look into using some form of automation and I believe Cube spray is uh, well positioned to do that. So with that, let's just go ahead and let the installation finish and uh, I'll see you back in a bit. Right, so, and there we are. As you can see from the timestamps, uh, my download is pretty slow and took me about an hour to, uh, to run the entire Ansible playbook through, but we got there. So that's it, we got our cluster up and running. Now, obviously you would need to be able to uh, administer your, uh, your cluster so what you need to do is you need to download kubectl uh, or whatever you like to call it. Um, you can just download uh, the latest version from the Kubernetes website. So the next thing I'll do is I need to config, um, I need to copy the, the config for kubectl. Um, I will actually copy it from my first master server um, to do that, I will uh, prepare the file on that server since it's read only for admin only. And so I need to make a, a couple of changes to be able to access the file. And then I can just um, copy it. machine. I will then move it to the dot cube directory. And just to clean it up, I'll remove the file from the server. So now I can see that I'm able to connect to my uh, to my Kubernetes environment, and the get nodes command will show me my six nodes all ready to go. So with that, I want to thank you for your time. I bring this to a close. See you next time.